Hey there guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at a comparison of the Ryzen 5 8600G, the desktop APU running against this Ryzen 7 7840HS based APU system. This of course being the Minisform UM780 XTX, my absolute favorite mini PC that I've ever used. It's one of those that I absolutely am blown away by the performance all the time. And I'm curious how this Ryzen 7 based mini pc is going to do up against a ryzen 5 desktop apu now there are some key differences that are really going to affect the performance on both of these systems if you watched the previous video that i did comparing this desktop apu up against the previous generation top of the line 680m graphics chip you'd know that even though that has four more cores the fact that it is based off of rdna 2 instead of rdna 3 like the 760m in this apu you that chip was also limited by the ram capacity or rather the ram speed and timing since it was pretty much only able to use sodium sticks that are clocked at a maximum of 4800 megahertz so not exactly an impressive result in comparison to the 6400 megahertz ram that is on this desktop especially since that is also using dlcp overclocking so it actually has tighter timings and the timings is really important for the performance of these APUs. This time around, the UM780 XTX does actually see a bump in overall clock speed where now we're able to use 5200 MHz RAM, but it is still limited by JDEC timings, which means that it's not exactly going to be earth-shattering differences in terms of performance uplift. And again, there is still that deficit of going from 5200 to 6400. So those are going to be the key points of difference between these two to specific systems. The CPUs themselves aren't going to matter as much in gaming, though in certain games it might actually make a difference, but really this is going to be mostly a GPU test more than anything else. And this will really show us what the difference actually is when you are using something based off of a desktop platform versus a mobile platform that is just slapped together into a tiny computer. So let's actually jump in and take a look at what the performance is like. So the first game that we're taking a look at is Helldivers 2 running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR at the performance preset and immediately here we're seeing a victory for the Ryzen 7 7840HS. So the Radeon 780M is actually taking a pretty noticeable lead here where we actually see our FPS average go from slightly below 60 to comfortably above 60. Though our 1% lows see a more moderate increase, but the fact that now we are getting 1% lows that are above 50 as opposed to being in the mid 40s is still a significant uplift and is overall going to make those improvements in the FPS average significantly better for us. Though realistically, the gaming experience is still great on both. The improvements overall with the Radeon 780M are pretty meaningful in this specific title. And especially in those missions where things get really, really hectic, it is the most ideal way to go about things. So already an impressive lead coming in with the Radeon 780M, though you might find that the testing is not going to completely reflect the results that we see here across the board. So it's going to be very interesting to see. If we jump on over to a almost decade old AAA title that still brings a lot of systems to their knees, here we have Batman Arkham Knight running with the medium in-game graphics settings at 100% 1080p resolution. And the overall result here is actually different than what we saw with the previous game where now technically the 760M is actually taking the lead here though it is by only a 2 FPS average and our 1% lows are effectively identical between the two systems. So in in any realistic scenario, playing this game on here with these exact settings is going to give you effectively the same result. I really doubt you're going to notice that 2 FPS difference, but it does show that that lead that we saw in Helldivers 2 is not going to be consistent across all titles, and in fact, things might look drastically different. And you see that here in Guardians of the Galaxy running with the lowest in-game graphic settings and we are using FSR but this time FSR is set to the quality preset. Here we actually see the 760M take a pretty noticeable lead in terms of the FPS average and also in the 1% lows. Overall it is going to be a smoother experience and it is pretty surprising but I think this is one of those titles that is actually taking advantage of the increased memory bandwidth of the 8600G as opposed to the mobile AP 
CPU that is stuck using only JDEX speeds and timings. Of course, not all titles are going to benefit from this. Here we have Tiny Tina's Wonderland running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR, the quality preset. And we do see the 780M take a lead here, though it isn't a meaningful one with only a 3 FPS increase in our FPS average and only a 3 frame difference for our 1% lows. Overall, essentially identical performance. You're really going to be hard pressed to tell the difference between the two when you're actually playing the game. But again, it is a lead for the 780M though. Again, it's just a technical win. Considering that we're dealing with four extra GPU cores, you would almost expect a drastically better result here. That's just not the case. Now, the next title we're taking a look at is Rise of the Tomb Raider running with the very high graphics preset here. And here we actually see the 760M take a pretty noticeable lead here, where our FPS average is a lot closer to an, a 50 FPS average, though not quite there. And our 1% lows actually do see a nice bump of a five frame difference that essentially brings us up from teetering on the edge of going below 30 and puts us comfortably in the mid 30s which is not ideal you definitely if you're actually trying to play this game on here should just bring things down to high or even medium but even in the most intense scenario here both systems are actually comfortably above 30 and comfortably above 40 though the 760m is actually going to be the overall best experience here the next title we're taking a look at is Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord running with the medium in-game graphics settings. And here we see a far smaller difference between the two systems, where again, the 780M is technically taking a lead here, but a 2 FPS difference in the average and a 1 frame difference for our 1% lows is not really going to be all that noticeable. These are effectively the same level of performance, but considering that the 760M has 4 less cores on the gpu it's not exactly looking great for the 7840 hs in general here but the higher tdp for the cpu as well as the memory clock increases are effectively making up for all of the deficit that comes from those cores now taking a look at another modern title here, we have Assassin's Creed Mirage running at the medium in-game graphic settings and we are using the balanced setting for FSR. And here we get essentially the same scenario of effectively similar performance where the 780M technically has a victory here with a one frame increase with our FPS average. That is pretty much instantly wiped away by the fact that it got a two frame difference for the 1% lows. So essentially while you're playing this title on either one of these systems, you are going to have pretty much the same gaming experience. So again, the memory clock speed increase on the desktop version is really just making up for the lack of cores here. Now, an interesting one was Avatar Frontiers of Pandora running at the lowest quality settings and we are using FSR at the performance preset. And while our FPS average and our one percent lows are very similar on paper in the actual overall benchmarking experience throughout most of it the frame times were really looking worse for the 760m but neither system is going to give you a good enough result that it makes up for those problems the 780m while on paper does look overall better and smoother neither one is going to be a great playing experience and i just don't think you should play the game on either system it's effectively a loss for both of them as you could probably guess by the fact that the one percent lows are in the teens now taking a look at Far Cry 6 running at the ultra settings and FSR set to ultra quality, this title seems to run really well on both of these systems, but there is a clear and pretty massive lead for the 780M here, where we're seeing a pretty substantial increase in our FPS average going from below 60 to the mid 70s and our 1% lows getting bumped from the low 40s all the way up to above 60. In general, there is a drastic difference in terms of the overall performance and playability of this title on either system that it's actually really surprising. But it really seems like this title takes full advantage of the overall improved hardware of the 780M while not really caring too much about the clock speeds or timings on the RAM. 
Of course, taking a look at another modern title, here we have Returnal running at the lowest in-game graphics settings, and FSR is at the performance preset. And here, while we don't really see a meaningful uplift in the FPS average with the 780M on this mobile APU, we do actually see a pretty meaningful gain in those 1% lows where before we were in the low 20s, now we're exactly at 30, which means we are pretty much at the point of this becoming a playable experience though again this is at a really reduced quality setting that i realistically don't think most people would want to play for a game that has so many particles flying on the screen because fsr's fringing really makes a lot of that look noticeably bad and as soon as you bump up the fsr settings even slightly you are already losing those one percent lows now taking a look at another one of those titles that loves to bring modern systems to their knees here we have deus ex mankind divided running at the medium graphics settings and here we see effectively the same performance on both systems the differences in the 1% lows and the FPS average are essentially negligible. You're essentially getting the exact same experience on both systems. Though again, the 780M on paper should be giving us a better result because of the more cores that it has. But those memory timings and those memory clock speeds on the desktop APU are really making up for a lot of those differences to the point where both systems are effectively the same. So if we're judging by that, I'm curious to see what the performance of something like the 8700G would be, where we actually try out a 780M that is a desktop APU instead of a mobile one like this. That might be something that I'm going to have to pick up to test out because I'm extremely curious to see what the results would be. Now taking a look at Rainbow Six Siege running at the lowest graphic settings but FSR set to quality, here we see another title that has a pretty massive difference between between the two systems. It seems that this title really can take advantage of the benefits of the 780M and doesn't really seem to care all that much about those clock speeds and timings for the RAM. Both systems are of course giving you fantastic levels of performance, but there is a huge lead for the 7840HS based system. It's actually pretty surprising how big of a difference there is in a title like this. Though again, it's a lot less meaningful because of the fact that overall, Either system is going to give you an incredible experience in this title. So overall, what is the conclusion that can be made out of all of this? Well, it really seems like the mobile APU that we have here, even though it is a Ryzen 7 based system with a higher end iGPU, in most titles, it's going to perform about the same as the 760 based APU on the desktop here, even though that's a Ryzen 5. It isn't really that surprising because of the fact that we have known for a very long time that memory timings and memory clock speeds are pretty much king for APUs where it doesn't really matter if you have more cores or even a higher clock speed the memory is a lot of the times the biggest bottleneck though we did see that in some titles it wasn't exactly that clear cut with specifically Far Cry 6 being such a huge surprise to me because of the fact that visually speaking it is a really nice looking title and yet it is a great performer on either one of these systems but a a noticeably better experience on the on the 7840HS. Though again, that is not going to be the case across the board. And very rarely are you going to see that the 780M on this APU is going to fall behind the 760M on the desktop, but it did happen a couple of times, though not by a meaningful margin. But it does mean that if we were to get the desktop version of what is essentially this mobile APU here, the difference might actually be more substantial than I would have originally expected it to be. Of course, as I mentioned before, the 7840HS in this APU does run at a higher clock speed for the memory in comparison to the 7735HS that we took a look at before, where that was just running at 4800 megahertz. This was running at 5200. But both of those are using still JDEC timings, which are a lot looser than DOCP-based memory that is essentially going to have slightly 
slightly tighter timings that you can also adjust yourself even more if you would like to improve your performance. But if you're just looking for out of the box settings with, you know, XMP slash DOCP, the desktop is still going to give you a pretty noticeable advantage. Though when we look at prices overall, these mobile based mini PCs still are very competitive, especially for the size, you are still going to struggle to make a mini PC with these desktop APUs that is competitive in the size of this specific system here and most other systems based on this APU. And overall, I think that you're going to be better off if you care about size going with these mini PCs. But if you care about performance, upgradability, and size isn't really a factor at all, these desktop APUs are pretty impressive. Though at the price points that they're at, you're almost better off just getting a cheap desktop CPU from either Intel or AMD and throwing in a $80 to $100 used graphics card. And I really want to make a video showing what the difference is between, you know, this mini PC, this desktop APU, and an actual desktop graphics card that you could pick up on AliExpress right now for $80. So if you're interested in seeing that, be sure to let me know down below because I'm curious if anybody's really interested in seeing that. But I'll catch you guys in the next one and let me know what you thought about the results here because it actually was more surprising to me than i thought in a lot of ways though some things were not as surprising but anyways i'll catch you guys in the next one